ಘನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತಿರವನ ಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿ ವರಧಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗೋ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗೋ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗೋ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗೋ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗೋ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗೋ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ್ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ್ ಗುರು ದೇವ್ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ್ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಗುರು ದೇವ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮಿರಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಾಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಸ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಾಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನಾತಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೀಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯೆ ವಾಂಛಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯತೀತಾಂ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಸ್ತಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯಧೀಸುತಾರಿಣಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತೀಂ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೂ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯೇಶು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಾಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿಕಿ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಪಾದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಸೋ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟು ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟು this chapter is entitled this canto is entitled prescribed duties of mankind and in this we are reading about the lamentation of king chatraketu let me read the words atmana priyate na atma parata svata eva va lakshaye labdha kamam tvam ಚಿಂತೆಯ ಸಬಲ ಮುಖ ಆತ್ಮನ ಪ್ರಿಯತೆ ನಾತ್ಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ 
Sukadeva Goswami said, O King Parikshit, although the great sage Angira knew everything, he inquired from the king in this way. Thus, King Kintraketu, desiring a son, bent low in great humility and spoke to the great sage as follows. Purport by his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Since the face is the index to the mind, a saintly person can study the condition of one's mind by seeing the face. When Angirisha Rishi remarked about the king's discolored face, King Chatraketu explained the cause of his anxiety as follows. So this chapter is primarily talking about King Chatraketu's lamentation. And in the earlier chapters, we have seen how Rutrasura, he was a great devotee of the Lord, but he was a demon. And being a demon also, he has acquired devotion to the Lord. And he went back to Godhead. And this incident has perplexed Parikshit Maharaj. Yes, it to come to Krishna or to come to Lord Vishnu to pray Krishna is not an easy thing. It requires a great deal of piety to even come to close to praying Krishna. Yeah, I want to see that Parikshit has a problem here. He is trying to address that problem here, and that's why the story is being narrated. I like to spend the time on the problem statement. If we understand the problem well, then we know the solution much better. So why is Parikshit having this question? The reason is that Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, if somebody has to pray Krishna, he says that, Chatur Vidam Bhajan Temam Jana Sukritunu Arjuna Arto Jignasur Artarti Gnani Cha Bharatarshama Krishna is saying that there are four kinds of people who come to me. One who is a uh, who is in distress, one who is requires wealth, one who is inquisitive, one who is a knowledge person. These four kinds of people come, but for them to come, he says that they require a lot of sukritina. The sukriti is required. Without Sukriti, one cannot even come close to praying Krishna. Because you may go to demigod if you don't have Sukriti. But to come to Krishna, even for any desire, it requires a lot of fighting. And Rutrasura here is a demon. And Krishna also says that to pray Krishna, Krishna says in 7th chapter again, Deshamtva antagatam papam jananam punya karmanam if somebody has to play Krishna, that means that he has to be actually removed of all the sins. Antakatam papam. They should not be having any papam. And he should have done a lot of punya karmana. Only then he can do the with dhridavrata, with determination. He can pray Krishna. Lord has said that. But what is Rutrasura doing? Rutrasura is not in the Shuddha Sattva mode. Shuddha Sattva is in the 
mode of ignorance and passion. And Krishna says that for those people who are in the mode of passion and ignorance, it's very difficult to know him. He says, Tribir Gunamayair Bhavair Ebi Sarvam Idam Jagat Mohitam Nabi Janati Mami Bhyaha Paramabhyayam. He says that one who is in the three modes of uh, three modes, and for them, they are under illusion. It is very difficult to know him. Not only that, he says that there are four kinds of people who do not approach me. Krishna says very clearly in seventh chapter. He says that Namam Dushkritino Mudaha Prabhajante Naradamaha Mayaya Apahurta Gnana Asuram Bhava Mahita. He is saying anybody who is an Asura Bhava, he will not be able to come to me. That is the question. Now, Vritrasura is a demon. He has all the Asuri Bhavas. And how is it that he got devotion to the Lord Vishnu? Krishna. That is very rare. It's not possible. And devotion itself is very rare. Forget uh, having anything. Devotion to Lord Krishna is extremely rare. That Krishna says, Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kaschit Yatati Siddhaye Yatatama Bisiddhanam Kaschin Maam Vichitatvataha The same thing Parikshmara also quotes in the earlier verses, almost. He says that there are many, many people who are trying, who don't even try. Of the very few people who try, of those people who try, very one in a million will try to achieve perfection. Of those who achieved perfection, hardly one knows Krishna in truth. He says that. Now, how is it this demon is getting this? And bhakti is extremely rare, extremely rare. It's called Sudhurlabha. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami Prabhupada says bhakti has six qualities. He says Kleshagni, Shubhada, Moksha Lagata Akrat, Sudhurlabha. Sandrananda Vishishatma, Sri Krishna Karshani. He says that fourth part, he says, Bhakti is extremely, extremely rare. Krishna gives anything, but not Bhakti. And that Bhakti this Rutrasura had, how is it? He is able to pray Krishna, being in a demon. Typically, we see that when somebody does Hari Bhakti, he has all the good qualities. It is Yasyasti Bhaktir Bhagavat Akinchana Sarvair Gunair Tatra Samasate Suraha Arara Bhaktascha Kuto Mahan Gudan Manurate Nasti Dhavato Bhai. It means that only when one prays Krishna, he gets all the good qualities. If one is not a devotee of Krishna, he will not get any good qualities. How can it? Now, this is a contradiction again. This guy is a devotee and he is a demon. How is this possible? These are all the contradictions that Parishit Maharaj is seeing that. And how is it possible? Yes, that is so rare. He says that Krishna will give mukti, bhukti, everything, but not bhakti. Because that requires extreme, extreme, extreme piety. It said that when all the piety we have acquired at once, Practifies it manifests in the form of a guru, and then with the guru you get Krishna. With the devotee only you get Krishna. Now this is a demon birth, and this demon. Now, he has a devotion for Lord Vishnu. How is it possible? How is it possible? How we know that in Bhagavad Krishna says, "Bahunam janmanam ante gnanavan maam prapajyate vasudevasya sarvamiti samahatma sudarlaba." A person who comes to Krishna. Even for knowledge, it takes millions of births for him to know Krishna. So here we have a clue. This is that. Yes, for a gnani also to understand Krishna is everything, it takes millions of births. That means that there should be some birth history. That it is not just possible that this person, Krishna, whatever Krishna is saying is true, it can't be wrong. So that means that there should be something behind it which we are not seeing. That is why we say that there may be an earlier birth and that is what Sukadeva Goswami is trying to describe the story of Chitrakit. Yes. 
because this Rutsasura, what you see the Rutsasura is not is not the same Rutsasura that we see as a demon. He has a past, and that past for the bhakti. Here we see one thing: bhakti is a continuous process. It does not matter which birth you take. Once you do some bhakti, bhakti continues birth after birth, and bhakti is an independent thing. That's one thing we need to very clearly note. This is from Bhakti Rasam Sindhu. Prabhupada Goswami Prabhupada clearly says Bhakti is independent and Bhakti is continuous. It doesn't stop. We see that various stories. We have, there are a lot of accidental fall-downs happen. We see how the great Indrajuna Maharaj, he falls down and then he gets a curse and he becomes an elephant. But being in the elephant body also, he is in the lower modes, but he could remember Krishna at the time. That proves that bhakti is continuous, bhakti is independent. Krishna says that I will protect my devotees. He will give that intelligence that they can remember it. The same thing we see in the Jalabad story also. Bharat Maharaj, he went up still away, took extreme compassion to a deer. He took birth as a deer, still he remembered everything. Krishna gives that. But Krishna says, I give you that by which you can come back to me. He says that. So the point here is, one may be appearing as a demon here, but he might have done some bhakti in the past to even come to the stage to think of Krishna. And Krishna promises, Abhichet sapiturajaro pajante ma malanyavak sadurevacha mantavyo samyak vyavasito saha. He says that. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is considered saintly because he is properly situated in determination. That is the beauty. And Krishna says that Kshipram Bhavati Dharma Atma Shashvat Chanti Nankachati Kauntaya Pratiyana Hi Name Bhakta Pradasyate. When Krishna says that my devotee never perishes, even if there is an accidental fall down. It may be external, but bhakti, he protects bhakti. He protects the bhakti. Krishna protects the bhakti no matter what. Krishna is giving that. And Krishna also said that it is not bhakti is not only for a brahmanas or higher categories. Krishna said that bhakti is for everyone. He says, Mam hi vyapasritya, artha vyapasritya, epis papa yonaya, sriyo, vaisya sada sutraha, te yanti param gatim. He says that those who take shelter of Krishna, even if they have lower birth, women, Vaishyas, Sudras, or anybody, they can get the supreme destination. This is another proof for us. The story is giving us that no matter what kind of birth you have, it doesn't matter. What kind of uni you are born, it doesn't matter. When you take to Krishna, Krishna is protecting your bhakti and Krishna is uplifting, uplifting you from no, no matter what birth you are in, he is going to lift you up. That is the beauty of bhakti. So that is what we see from this uh, uh, story here. And if you see here how Srila Prabhupada, he has come to Western world. He has met all the Mlechas. Mlechas are outside the Varnashram system. They are not even Shudra, they are below that. He has converted all of these people to devotees. The reason is that they might have done some past piety act in the act in the previous life, which fructified to meet a great saint like Srila Prabhupada. And that started the journey in bhakti. And they could get to Krishna in his very lifetime. There are so many Prabhupada disciples, so many devotees even today. That is why we will not discriminate that just because Krishna said those people who are in good qualities will only get bhakti. It means that, yes, they might have had it. They might have done some accidental fall downs. Or they might have taken some other lower birth. But we should not stop trying from our side because it pleases Krishna. And those people, when we try to make an effort, those people who have done some past bhakti or association of devotees or by the association of devotees current today, they will be able to take the bhakti and move forward. We see in our movement very, very clearly this part. Now coming to this particular... Uh, Rutrasura's pastime, where we see that King Chandraketu, 
he uh, avatar sir in the earlier birth is king chatraketu and he has married hundreds of wives but he was morose because he has no sage no no children but sri angira who is the son of lord brahma when he approached him he could see that the king was unhappy and is inquiring from him in this particular verse shri prabhupada is writing that the face is the index to the mind he is saying that and the angira could angira the being great sage you could identify very easily something is seriously wrong because he is not peaceful he is agitated and a person can be peaceful only under one situation that when he is praying krishna he will be peaceful otherwise he will not be peaceful his brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kankshati samas sarvesh bhuteshi madhaktam labate param for one to be peaceful he will not be thinking of anything else he will not be desiring anything else he has only one desire which is to do devotion to the lord and you can do devotion only when you are peaceful and you can be peaceful when you don't have any other desire but you don't tell your desires with the desire of the lord that's the only reason you can be even prasanna manasa bhagavad bhakti radhakshaye bhagavad tatva vignanam mukta sangasya jayate they don't have any attachment those devotees who are prasanna manasa mean that they don't have any attachment they focus on the devotion of the lord if somebody is not focusing on the devotion of the lord that means that their mind is somewhere else and they want they have some desire which is not satisfied here the mind is the most important thing mind is the most important thing. krishna says in gita in 6th chapter bandur atmanas atmanas tasya enatmaiva atmana jitah anatmanas tu shatrutve vartate atmaiva shatravat For a person who has conquered the mind, it is their friend. For those who have failed to do so, the mind is an enemy. The Lord says, the mind, which is a reflection, the face which is a reflection in your mind, is where everything is there. And it can be your friend, it can be your enemy. If you are praying the Lord, if you are peaceful, that means that it's your friend. at the same mind if you are asking something you want to enjoy something that is your enemy and why krishna is focusing on mind why not other senses because mind is like a leader leader for all the senses he say that tot trotram chakshu sparsanam cha rasanam ghranam eva cha adishtaya manaschayam vishayan upasevate he say that the living entity takes taking another grass body obtain certain type of ear tongue nose and sense of touch which are grouped about by mind he thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects that means that my adhishtaya manaschaya i mean then mind is that leader when mind is somewhere else everything follows the mind that is why krishna says in the second chapter those who focus on material thing jayate vishyan pumsah angasteshu upajayate Angat sangayate kama ha kama kudu bijayate. He says that when you focus on material things, you get attachment to the material things, and that material attachment will develop a desire. When the desire is not fulfilled, you will get angry, and you will get finally you lose your intelligence and you destroy yourself. That is what Krishna is saying. Krishna says, "What is that?" Krishna is asking Bhagavad Gita, "What is bhakti yoga?" Bhakti yoga. Krishna is saying only two things. मन्मनाभो मद्भक्तो मध्या जीमा नमस्कृ मामे वैश्यते प्रति जाने प्रयोस मी से गिव युअर माइंड फर्स्ट मन्मना गिव युअर हार्ट टू कृष्णा देन बिकम इज डिवोटी द फर्स्ट थिंग कृष्णा इज आस्किंग इज गिव युअर माइंड ही आल्सो सेज इन दिस टेबल चैप्टर मै एव मन आदस्व मै बुद्धिम निवेश निवेशश्य मै एव अतबुद्धम न संधया यस give your mind to me he is telling first give your mind mind is supposed to be given to krishna 
and it's very difficult to give mind. But Krishna is saying, if you give mind, everything else follows. Amarish Maharaj is a great example. He started off giving his mind first. That's why he says, Tavai mana Krishna padara vindayo. Hey, that I have put my mind on Krishna's lotus feet first. When he puts his mind on Krishna's lotus feet, what happens? Then, Vachamsi Vaikunta Gunanu Varen naturally tongue will start glorifying it. What a beautiful lotus feet. What a beautiful lot. And when the tongue, which is in your hands, will start working towards it. Karau Haramandira Mahajana Adish. Uthim Saka Chuta Katodhiye. Your ears want to hear him. Your legs want to walk to the temple of the Krishna. Like this, every sense that we have, Karmendriya, Gnanendriya, both of them, when the mind is focused towards Krishna, everything else will follow. If the mind is not focused towards Krishna, then it is taking away from Krishna. That is why in the fourth chapter also Krishna says, give me work, do your work, but give your mind to me. Sriram kevalam karma kurvan napnodi kilmisham. Your body has to kevalam work. Then the work will not touch you because the mind is focused on Krishna. But what we do when we chant? Sriram kevalam chanting, mind is somewhere else. That's the problem we have. And we should all as practitioners try to control our mind towards Krishna. Then everything becomes perfect for us. That's something we have to really learn from Bhagavatam. One. So here he can see this. The king uh, Angisma Angira Shushi is seeing this. Like Chitraketu, his mind is in some material thing. That's why he is anxiety. There's anxiety in him. And he's asking, What is the cause of your anxiety? Chitraketu is replying, Chitraketu Uacha Bhagavan Kim Navijitam. Tapo gnana samadhi bihi yogi nam drasta papa nam bahirantasari rishu. King Chitraketu said, O oh, great Lord Angira, because of austerity, knowledge, and transcendental samadhi, you are freed from all the reactions of sinful life. Therefore, as perfect yogi, you can understand everything external and internal regarding embodied conditioned soul like us. It's a great example today Karan Prabhu was telling. Everybody should have a counsellor. Everyone. You're seeing that. Because what we think we are, we will not be able to see. But there is a person whom you trust. That person can see very clearly where are we in Maya, are we doing right. And here, you see in the same thing. When he put his faith on Angira, Angira is able to see through Chitraketu and he is able to identify that something is wrong. So he is reflecting on that. He says that you can see everything perfectly and you can understand everything. And he is, that's why he is answering that. Tatapi pruchato bruvyam brahman atmani chintitam bhavato vidu sas chapi choditas Oh, great fail, good soul. You are aware of everything, yet you are asking me why I am full of anxiety. Therefore, in response to your order, let me disclose the cause. This is important, very, very important thing. Yes, you know everything. Why are you asking the question? Because though we know, the Angira knows, or the Lord knows, we have to tell with our mouth, I have a fault. I have this problem. When we acknowledge, Lord appreciates. That means, first, you, we know we have a problem, but if we don't take shelter, nobody will give that. So we have to approach a senior or somebody and then, tell our problem, then they can guide. Though they may know it, sometimes 
they will not take the privilege of telling you unless you come back to them and say that, yes, I have, this is my problem, can you tell me? Though they know it, they will not give an answer. It's not adequate. That's why he's asking this. He's asking to disclose. So he discloses as part of that. And Chitrakit Maharaj is saying this. Loka palay api praktayaha amra jaiswarya sampadaha na nandayatnti aprajamam kshutrat kamam ivapare. As a person aggrieved by hunger and thirst is not pleased by the external gratification of flower garlands or sandalwood pulp, I am not pleased with my empire, opulence, or possessions, which are desirable even for the demigods because I have no son. Here he is explaining the reason why he is feeling that emotion, that I am lamenting because I do not have a son. He has everything. We have a tendency, especially as humans, human tendency is that we look at what we don't have and we always lament. We never look at what we have and be happy. We always look at what we don't have and lament. That is a special quality of a human being. Lamentation. Everybody laments. And Srimad Bhagavatam says, the only solution to this is to chant the name of Hari. You hear Srimad Bhagavatam and you hear Srimad Bhagavatam and chant slowly. Krishna removes that. The root cause of lamentation is the desire. And that desire is what is causing all this lamentation. You might have everything in life, but somebody has more than you can give lamentation. So we really lament for something useless. But here in this particular case, it's because he has no son, he is lamenting. Is that that important, that son, having a son for a king? As for the Vedas, yes, a son is the one who lives with the parents after the death. He gives the and the, to the Shraddha ceremony, he gives the food and everything to the parent. And they are saved from the Punaga uh, hell. Now he is thinking of that. I will not be able to go to heaven because I don't have a son. He, is, he has everything in this world. He is looking at the next world. What is that I am get, trying to get to? I am going to go to higher planetary systems and I want to enjoy there, there also. That is what we are thinking as a human being. It's all described in Vedas. So he is thinking that. And as part of that, he is saying that he is looking for material benefits. He is not in the spiritual platform. He is following the Vedic way, but he is not in the spiritual platform. That is why he is saying this. But we have examples. Even if you don't have a son, you can become perfect in life. Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev never married. He never had a son. But he went back to Godhead. The goal of life is not to go to higher planetary systems. The goal of the life is to get out of this material misery and go back to Godhead. For that, you don't require anybody. All you require is your endeavor. Just since you love to Krishna and you'll be able to overcome that. But for common people to follow, there are Vedas described. What does the Veda describe? It says that Traigunya Vishya Veda Nistraigunya Bhavarjana Nidvando Nitya Satvasto Nidhiyo Kshima Atmava. Here the Vedas tell you three gunas. And they are meant for getting some material benefits. But you get over, Krishna is saying, you get over all these three modes, which are in the uh, Vedic system, three modes of there, are the material desires. Get out of these things and pray me. Krishna is advising it. But then, because Vedas has that section of Karmakanda, 
which describes how to get one desired fruit. People are focused more on that process than the actual way Krishna says, Vedanta, we forget the goal of the Vedas to know the Krishna. But we look at everything else but Krishna. That's the problem we have. That's the problem even Chatrakit Maharaj has. He's exactly having the same problem. And that's why he's referring that. But Bhagavatam says, that does it mean that we should not ask for anything? We should not have anything? We should not desire anything? No, we can desire basic things to do our bhakti. He says that Kamasya na indriya pritir labo jiveta yavata jivasya tattva jignata nato yascheh karma bihi. He says that our life desire should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire a healthy life for self preservation. In the human being, is meant for inquiring for the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's work. The goal of one's life should be to keep yourself healthy, whatever it takes for you to be healthy and whatever it takes for you to pray Krishna easily. It does not mean completely giving up. That is why Rupa Goswami Rupa says, Anya Abhilashita Sunyam. He never said Anya Abhilasha Sunyam. He said Anya Abhilashita. It means that whatever basic things that are required to maintain yourself to do bhakti, that is okay. But anything else beyond that is not okay. That should be the way. But in this particular case, we are seeing that he is asking. Son, the goal is that he wants to go to higher planetary system or he does not want to go to hell. That's the thing. But one has to realize even if one goes to heaven, they cannot stay there permanently. They have to come back. Raividya, Mam, Svama, Papa, Puta, Papa, Agne, Ishtva, Svargatim, Pratayante, Te Punya Masa, Jasurindra Lokam, Asmanti Divyan, Vivega Gogan. You may do all the Vedic things or have everything else to seek heavenly planets, but they are indirectly worshipping Krishna for that. And because they are doing all this karmakanda process, they are suffering because they have sins. And because their sins are getting purified, they take birth in a pious heavenly planet or they get material benefits here, where they get all the luxuries and happiness. But what happens? That happiness, that happiness is temporary. It's going to Tetam Bhukta Sragalukam Vishalam Kina Punya Matalukam Vishanti Evam Tai Dharmam Anuprapanna Katagatam Kama Kama Lavanti. When you finish out your cord of enjoyment, you will have to return to the material world. Is that what our goal is? Bhagavatam, this chapter is called Prescribed uh, Duties of Mankind. So it is taking you from what is Swadharma. It elevates you to Parodharma. Swadharma means as a person, as a father, as a king, what is my duty? He is describing that. From there, elevate yourself to from that level to Parodharma, to Krishna. What is the real purpose of life? That is what we are trying to see here. And he is giving the reason why he wants to have the son. Atah pahi mahabhaga urvai sahagatam tamaha yata tarema dushparam prajayatad videhi naha. Therefore, O great sage, please save me and my forefathers who are descending to the darkness of hell. Because I have no progeny, kindly do something so that I may have a son to deliver us from these hellish conditions. This is a very important concept that what he is asking is not wrong from the point of view of 
any Vedic uh, process because a Vedic process says that one has to beget a children. And when you have a children, and you have to raise them in proper consciousness. And when one passes away, they're not sure they're going to go to which yoni because not everybody is a devotee of the Lord. Because it requires a lot of piety to go to, to pray Krishna. But not everybody is a devotee of the Lord. So they have to follow some Vedic processes. And as part of that, if you have a son, son will offer the Pinda Pradhan. First 13 days uh, when the parents die, they do a lot of activities. And then yearly they do activities. Every month they do. And then, then yearly they do all these activities. This is done so that they offer the Krishna Prasada to the soul. So that they get benefited. And they get to live in the Pitru Loka. And they get to live as long as the sun performs the right. Three generations. They perform, they get to enjoy in the loka, and then they come back after that. But at least they are thinking that they are getting that enjoyment, they are getting the Krishna Prasad, the consciousness has improved. They get the bad, their sins are destroyed. That is a Vedic process. It's, it should be followed. It's not that we should not follow that. It should be followed. And he is referring to that process. And is the reason why we see even uh, Bhagirat Maharaj, uh, he brings a Ganges from heaven for his forefathers. Arjuna also asks the same question in the Bhagavad Gita in the first chapter. He says that when we have unwanted progeny, there's nobody who does Lupta Pindodaka Kriya. He says that nobody offers his Pindodaka to parents and they find this will fall down. And we become responsible for that. That means this process is very, very important. It's important. So he's referring to that. He's setting it for mankind, for the Swadharma, what one should do. He's trying to set that condition here. He's saying, this is what is happening. I need, because I don't have a son, I need this. Some so please said, that's why I am morose. I cannot go to heaven. Now my forefathers will be get, able to get their a share of Pinda and they'll fall down otherwise. They'll be suffering. So he's asking the question. What Arjuna asked the same question is similarly he's asking here. Sutaket Maharaj is asking. And in fact, one should offer this. In fact, uh, uh, Narasimhadev, Lord Narasimhadev, uh, when he killed Hiranyakashipu, uh, he says to Prahlad Maharaj, I have personally touched your father, but still, you do the Shraddha ceremony. He says, preta kritiyani pitu utasya sarvasaha madanga sparsanganena lokan yasya suprajaha. My dear chair, your father has already been purified just by my touch of my body at the time of death. Nonetheless, the duty of his son is to perform the Shraddha Ritualistic ceremony after his father's death. So that his father may be promoted to a planetary system where he may become a good citizen and a good devotee. He is telling so that he should set an example for others. Example. Set an example. Because you may be devotee, not everybody is a great devotee like you. And people will not do their regular duties. You should surely get from Sadharma to Padarodharma. But don't give Sadharma till you get to Padarodharma. You have to follow Sadharma. Dharma is important. Dharma is always important. He says, set an example. He says in the Bhagavad Gita also, Loka Sankraha Mevahi. He says that, yes, Janaka Maharaj and myself, I am all doing this just to set an example to others. And whenever great people do it, others follow. Yadhyadhacharati sreshtaha sapta deve tarojanaha rayat paramanam kurite lokasu dhanuvartite. Whatever great people do, other people will follow that. So, he is saying, do this. Let me move to the next words. Sisuka vacha eti artita sa bhagavan Kripalu Brahmana Sutaha Rapaitva Charm Tastram Tastaram Ayajat Vibhu. In response to the request of Mahachitra Ketu, Angiri Shirushi, who was born of Lord Brahma's mind, was very merciful towards him because the sage was a greatly powerful personality. 
he performed the sacrifice by offering oblations or sweet rice to Trasta. Here we see that Angir Sarishi, he is knowledgeable in all the Vedic uh, systems, so he did a sacrifice to demigods so that he can get a son. Sarva Gita says that, right? Kankshata karmanam siddhim ejanti iha devata kshipram hi manusham loke siddhir bhavate karmaya. If they want some material life, people go for demigod worship. And they get their results very quickly. But Krishna also says that, yes, you will get your desires quickly. But does it come freely? No. They come with a package. The package is that you will also get pain along with. Let's see this. Jeshta Shreshta Chaya Ragno Samahi Mahi Sinam Chavarata Namna Krata Jyotis Tasyai Agno Chestam Adat Zijaha. O Parikshit Maharaja, best of the Bharatas, the remnants of the food offered in the Agna were given by the great sage Angira to the first and the most perfect among Ketraketu's millions of queens whose name was Kritadjuti. And then he says, Ataha Andrapatim Rajan Bhavitai Kas Tavat Majaha Adrisha Soka Padastubhyam Iti Brahma Suto Yayau. Here after the great priest told the king, O oh, great king, now you will have a son who will be cause of both jubilation and lamentation. And the sage then left without waiting for Chatraketu's response. He wanted some material benefit. So Angira thought of teaching him and I said, okay, I'll get you. And he gets this material benefit, but he also warned him. You will also get Sukha and Dukha both with him. He didn't wait for us, he went away. Why is that? Krishna says, right? Ehi samsparshaja bhoga dukkha yo na yo vate adjantavan takavante ya nate shuramate buddha. Say very clearly that whatever happiness we are trying to derive, it is coming from the womb of dukkha. That means that we will, we want sukha, but without asking, we will get. The dukkha, that is part of the package and we have to suffer for it. We may feel happy, we may be blinded that I have happiness, but tomorrow we have to suffer for that. Because any material desire, especially when you pray demigods, it is that. And Krishna says in 17th chapter, 7th chapter, he says that, Antapantu palam tesham tad bhavati alpamedasam devam, uh, says that, uh, those who pray to the demigods go to demigods and those who pray to Krishna will go to Krishna. But those people who pray demigods are alpamedasam. They are small and minus small intelligence. And the benefits they derive are antam they are limited and they are temporary. So here Angira has told because he is a very knowledgeable person. He told, you wanted some material, I get you material. But this is not going to be permanent. This is going to be very temporary. Now, if you want permanent happiness, permanent thing, the only way, only way, only way is to pray Krishna. There is no other way. There is absolutely no other way but to pray Krishna if one wants to be. Yeah. And Prabhupada is writing in one of the purports here. He says that Uh, he is saying that let there be son. It does not matter if he is not very obedient. Because this is the, uh, always the tendency of the people. I want a son, no matter whether it's good or bad, I want to have a son. What good a son is, if he is not a good guy, he can fall, make you fall from heaven. If son is good only, he can lift you. If son is bad, he can make you fall from heavenly planets down to uh, hellish planets. He says that. Chanikyaman is referring to Chanikyaman's statement. Ko artha putrena jatena yova yona vidwan na dharmaikaha kanena 
चक्षुषा किं वा चक्षु पीदैव केवलम वाट इज दूज सच सन हु इज नेदर ए लैंड स्कॉलर नॉट ए डिवोटी अच सन इज ब्लाइंड दिस इज राय इज ऑलवेज कॉज सफरिंग नेवर थ्रा द मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज सो पोल्यूटेड दट वन वॉन्ट्स टू हैव ए सन इवन दो इज यूजलेस दिस एटीट्यूड वॉज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ किंग केत्र के तो दिस इज वॉट यू गेट वेन यू आस फॉर समथिंग मेटीरियल थिंग बिकॉज यू आर अपसेस अबाउट इट यू मे गेट इट बट इट कम्स विथ अ पैकेज ऑफ अनवॉन्टेड थिंग्स विच यू डोंट वॉन्ट That's really what he's saying. Here's the next verse. Tapi tat prasa prasnad eva chitra ketur adha adhara yat garbam katab yutir devi kriti kangir ivat majam. Yes, kriti ka devi. After receiving the semen of Lord Shiva from Agni. Conceived a child named Skanda, Kartikeya. Sudarshiti, having received the semen from Chitraketu, became pregnant after eating the remnants of food from the igna performed by Angira. So here is uh, Shakadev Goswami is comparing that in by performing the igna, the igna sista was given to the first wife of uh, Chitraketu named Kartikeya, and after eating that she became pregnant but he is also relating that agnishista is like fire and it is like very very uh, auspicious thing and is comparing that with the uh, birth of the kartikeya is referring to the kartikeya here uh, it is a, there is a beautiful story about kartikeya how there is a demon called tripurasura and uh, i think the tripurasura uh, he Took a boon that nobody but Lord Shiva's son can kill him, because he wanted to not not to die, but nobody offers him that the boon. So he intelligently asks, just like Ranjit Pasika asked Brahma, he intelligently asks, "I want the son of uh, Lord Shiva who only can kill me, but he knows that he has already died, gave up a body, and Shiva is not going to marry, and though." He was uh, very confident. Shiva is such a great Vaishnava. He doesn't have interest in material things, so he will never get a child, and so he will be eternally living. But uh, the demigods, the and Lord, even Lord, they when uh, Sati takes birth as Parvati, Lord Ramachandra instructs Lord Shiva to bless her, and that way the Lord Ramachandra and Shiva marries Parvati. But even after marriage to Parvati, Shiva was not disturbed. And though they sent Kamadev to agitate Shiva, but Shiva burns Kamadev into ashes. But later he gets attracted to uh, the uh, divine purposes. He he goes to Parvati, but then his semen drops in six parts, and those six parts uh, is very divine because they are the one who is going to kill uh, this demon. So the Vayu carries that demon, uh, that semen, and then because he cannot. Uh, Bear that heat he gives to Agni, and then Agni gives it to Ganges. Ganges gets evaporated. He takes it to Sarvana Lake, and then there the Kritika, six Kritikas, uh, they get the semen and they give birth to six babies, and Parvati makes the six babies into one. It's called Skanda. That's why we hear Kartikeya, Skanda, Shanmuka, like the Sarvana Baba, like these all these names of uh, Kartika comes, and this very Kartikeya becomes the son of Krishna. In the Krishna Lila Samba, Tasya Anu Dinam Garba Shukla Paksha Ivo Dupa Va Vrde Suras Surasena Sa Tejasa Sana Kair Nupa. After receiving the semen from Maharaj Chitraketu, the king of Surasena, Queen. कृतज्ञ ज्योति ग्रेजुअली डेवलप्ड इन द प्रेगनेंसी ओ किंग परीक्षित जस्ट द मून डेवलप्स ड्यूरिंग द ब्राइट फोर्टनाइट सो ही इज रिफरिंग ही डिस्क्राइबिंग हाउ द वूम ही इज द बेबी इज इन द वूम इज डेवलपिंग ही सेइंग दैट जस्ट एज द ब्राइटर हाफ द 
moon in the first uh, part from Amavasya to Purnima, how does the moon increase in size? Whether the baby was increasing in size and growing in the womb of the mother Kritadhyati. Atakale upavrutte kumara samajayata janayan surase nanam shunvatam paramam mudham. Thereafter, in due course of time, a son was born to the king. Hearing news of this, all the inhabitants of Surasena were extremely pleased. Obviously, when a son is born, everybody is pleased in the family. So similarly here, we see that when the son was born to King Chitraketu, because he was desperate for a son and waiting for years and a lot of uh, 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 difficulty and penance, he could get a son, so he was extremely happy. And not only him, all the residents were happy. Krishto Rajakumarasya Nata Suchir Alantata Vachaitva Siso Viprahi Karayam Asajatakam. Chitraketu was especially pleased after purifying himself by bathing and by decorating himself with ornaments. He engaged learned Brahmanas in offering benediction to the child and performing the birth ceremony. Here, one of the other Vedic important mankind duty is mentioning that when a child is born, we have to perform so many samskaras. He is performing Jataka samskara, he is doing that samskara. Just as when a person dies, there are 13 days of this uh, sutaka. When a person is born, also there is sutaka for 10 days. And here they are observing, and after that they purify every the punya vachanam and then do all things, and they make sure everything is purified there in the tournament. They did all this uh, processes as part of the birth of the child. Tebhyo hiranyam rajatam vasam si abharanalicha graman hayan kajan pradhad. Denu nam arbhudani sat. Unto Brahmanas who took part in the ritualistic ceremony, the king gave charity of gold, silver, garments, ornaments, villages, horses, and elephants, as well as 60 crores of cows. They do all these things so that all the Brahmanas and everybody bless their child. We see in the Krishna, when Krishna was born, Vasudeva was in jail. But even in the jail, through his heart, he gave millions of cows in charity to Brahmanas. Nanda Maharaj, when he sees a baby Krishna in the Gokul, next day he gives a lot of cows in charity. 900 cows, he gives million cows, he gives in charity. So many cows they give in charity because they want all the people to bless their child. And blessings are very, very important. And blessings are very important because we see in the story of this Markandeya how the blessings of the Vaishnavas helped him overcome the death. So they typically, it is the uh, parent thing, they do all this charity, so everybody blesses. The great Vaishnavas bless, that becomes true. And in Indian Prabhupada can be overwritten because of that. That is why they do all these kinds of pious activities. Vavarshakaman Anyesaham Parjanya Iva Dehinam Dhanyam Yasyasyam Ayushmam Ayushyam Kumar Yasyamahamana. As the cloud indiscriminately pours water on the earth, the beneficent king Kendraketu, to increase the reputation, opulence, and longevity of his son, distributed like a rainfall all desirable things to everyone. So he is clearly mentioning here that King Chitraketu to for the benefit of his son, for his longevity, for his opulence, for his reputation, he gave everything. He gave like just as a cloud gives water to everyone, he gave to he doesn't discriminate, he gave to everyone in his country everything, whatever they wanted. Well, they have become happy and they bless the child. They've done the intent they have done us. Richa labde etarajarshe tanaye 
अनुदिन पितु यता निस्वास्य प्राप्ते धाने स्नेहो अनावर्धता When a poor man gets some money after great difficulty, his affection for the money increases daily. Similarly, when King Chaturketra, after great difficulty, received a son, his affection for the son increased day after day. This is a great lesson. When we get something which we don't have, instead of being satisfied, we want more and more. We attach ourselves more and more. That is why he says. It is just as you pour ghee in the fire, it appears temporarily subsided, but attachment it only grows further. Similarly, we may think that our attachment is temporarily satisfied. No, our attachment grows further. But what should we really desire? We are poor for what? We are poor for Krishna consciousness. We should be hungry for Krishna. Today, Prabhu Ji was telling, what is that? which causes people not to be attracted to bhagavatam what is the secret of bhagavatam is that we are lacking the hunger for bhagavatam we should feel ourselves poor we don't have a taste we should feel the hunger for the bhagavatam we should feel we are poor we should hanker for it then we should go for it we should develop taste for it and you should get it मातुस्त अति तारम पुत्रे स्नेहो मोह समुद्भव पृथ्युते सपत्नीना प्रजा काम ज्वरो भवत द मदर्स अट्राक्शन अटेन्शन टू द सन लाइक दट ऑफ ए फादर लाइक दट ऑफ द चाइल्ड फादर एक्सेसिवली इंक्रीज अदर वाइफ सी कृतज्युति सन आर वेरी मच एजुटेटेड as if by high fevers with a desire to have sons now the problem starts it's good that kritajyuti has a son now he is also a son for other wife co wives but because she has a son he was showing affection towards her king others were neglected so they also said that because he has a son he is showing affection they did not have son and they are feeling bad we also want a son we don't have a son this is the nature of our envy because they have it we don't have it and they show special affection because of that that is cause of root cause of problem we see in the history of daksha story also how daksha gave his daughters in marriage to chandra Twenty-eight daughters in marriage to Chandra, but Chandra has special affection for Rohini star. He would spend entire time with Rohini because of which Daksha cuts his rose star. Because he was not, you like something, you focus exclusively on that. You should be as a husband. You should do your duty equal to everyone. And because of which he cuts us him. Daksha cuts us Chandra. Similarly, here you see when you he we see in Rama and when. The same kind of Agni Shista was given to Dashrath Maharaj. He gave it equally to all the four, all the wives. Although there is no cause of envy, the king has to be very careful what he is doing. Here in this particular case, he gave it to one queen, and he showed his affection to one queen that caused la envy to others. Chitra ke tur ati prithir eta dhare prajavati na thathane shu. तथानु रंजाने बलम ललायतोन्वहम एस किंग चतुर्केतु फॉस्टर्ड इज वन वेरी केयरफुली ही इज अफेक्शन फॉर द क्वीन कृतज्योति इंक्रीज और ग्रेजुअली ही लॉस्ट अफेक्शन फॉर द वाइज हु हैड नो सन्स इट इज वेरी नेचुरल वी सी इन द स्टोरी ऑफ द्रुमाज आल्सो हाउ व्हेन द्रुमाज बिकॉज़ ही लाइक्ड हिज सेकंड वाइफ ही स्टार्टेड पैंपरिंग फील दैट 
they are alienated and their affection is lost after they feel bad. But that causes envy also. That parya tapyan atmanam garhayan kyo abhyasu yaya anapatyena dhukkena ragnas the other queens were extremely unhappy due to their being friendless. Because their king's negligence towards them, they condemned themselves in envy and lamented. Dig aprajam striyam papam atyus chatrakasam matam suprajabhi sapatni bhir dasi miva tirikshatam A wife who has no sons is neglected at home by her husband and dishonored by her co-wife exactly like a maid servant. Such a, certain such a woman is condemned in every respect because of her sinful life. Now who is to be blamed? Is the king to be blamed? Or the wife to be blamed? Because the king is not doing his duty of taking care of everyone equally. He has surely special affection towards somebody. You are attached to somebody that is causing anger to somebody else. The Prabhupada is mentioning uh, here in the purport about Chanakya Pandita, how a mother has to be. Yes, Mata Yascha Gruhe Nasti Bariya Chapriya Vadini Aranyam Te Nagantavyam Yataranyam Tata Graham. A person who has no mother at home or whose wife does not speak sweetly, should go to forests. Such a person living at home and living in the forest are equal. Similarly, for a woman who has no son, who is not cared for by her husband and co-wives neglect her, treating her like a maid servant, to go forest is better than to remain at home. He is comparing the technology and saying that if you don't have a son, if you are being neglected, it is better to go into the forest then living and treated like a maid servant. So the onus is primarily on the king. If you look at here. Dasi nam konu santapaha swami na parichari jaya abhikshanam labdha mananam dasya dasi va durbhaga Even maid servants who are constantly engaged in rendering service to the husband are honored by the husband. And thus, they have nothing for which to lament. Our position, however, is that we are maid servants of the maid servants. Therefore, we are most unfortunate. They are comparing themselves that we are not even like maid servants. At least, maid servants are acknowledged by the king. We are maid servants or maid servants. In the material world, we always think of I should be boss. I should be the biggest boss. Here, they are treating him as Dasa Dasa Anudasi. Only in devotional service people accept Dasa Dasa Anudasa as a way to go forward. In the material world, nobody accepts Dasa Dasa Anudasa. They want Basa Basa Anudasa. That's the material world. And we see that they are saying that because we are being, in the material perspective, they are looking at and say that we are being servant of the servants. We have no value. And they are building lamentation, envy because of that. Evam sa sandhaya mananam sapatnya putra sampada ragno sammata vritti nam vidvesho balavan abhut. Sri Sukha Goswami continued being neglected by their husband and seeing Kratadyuti's opulence in possessing a son, Kratadyuti's co wives always burned in envy, which became extremely. Extremely strong. Anvi is such a quality, Krishna says that you can preach Bhagavad Gita to anyone, but not to those people who are envious. Because envy is such a, a quality that it makes you act opposite. That is why Krishna says, don't preach Bhagavad Gita to envious people because. These people, out of envy, they act against Krishna. They were accused neutral at least now because of envy, they act against Krishna. That is why Krishna says in the third chapter, do not touch the envious people. Don't teach anything. Don't ask them to give up the work. 
of the enemy's people because they are, if you tell bhakti for them, they think in the wrong way. He says that. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is extremely merciful. He gave Harinam to everyone. He says that even they can be purified by hearing your Harinam. When you chant the Harinam, you can purify even those envious hearts. But the beauty of the Harinam of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us, and Sri Prabhupada has given us, we should take this Harinam to everyone. Like we see in this particular story here, how even a demon can uh, become a devotee because it's a coincidence that it's a, some accidental apraja has been done, they have fallen down. But Krishna's, any thought of Krishna can revive their consciousness. Similarly, we should also take the Harina. People may have fallen down for various reasons, but when the Harina is given to them, that will purify them. Shrimatam Sakata Krishna. When you chant the name of Krishna or hear about Krishna, that purifies everything in our heart and makes our life perfect. With that, I'll pause here. I know I'm on time. With you, if you have any questions or comments, I'll take. Hare We don't have any questions. Thank you everyone for attending the class and giving me opportunity to speak about the Lord. Pancha Kalpataru Bhyascha Krupa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishna Vibhyo Nam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Bol Prabhuji Excellent Thank, Thank you Prabhuji Wonderful class Thank you Prabhuji Thank you Prabhuji Thank you so much Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dandavat Pranam Thank you Thank you Ma'am Hare Krishna Prabhuji Yeah Prabhuji Prabhuji uh, I have one question You said right uh, Your son is uh, uh, son can make uh, the father to come to the hellish uh, planet also. How how it uh, how it can happen, Prabhuji? If you don't do your duty, son doesn't do his duty. But then again, we depend on others' karma, Prabhuji. The reason is that see, a son, a good son, can lift mm -hmm. you. A bad son can drown you also. Okay, everything comes with a package. There is nothing in this world which doesn't come with a package. Everything comes with a package. You are given a knife. A knife can be used by a doctor nicely or can be used to murder. Similarly, everything God has given us, mind, example, mind is given. Mind can be a friend, a mind can be enemy. That is why it is important in the Vedic knowledge. When you get a son is not enough. Raising the son in the right consciousness is most important. If you don't raise him in the right consciousness, he is going to be draining you. Take the example of Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra by himself was a little better guy. But his son was so abominable, to please his son, he was doing abominable activities also. Mm -hmm. But Prabhuji, right? uh, we are giving a good education, but we cannot force them, right? It's totally depend upon them. I have they have to take it or not. But uh, if we are depending on them, uh, our uh, this karma, then uh... no, no, no. I am talking of those people who don't pray Krishna. Oh, okay, Prabhuji. This, this, all these are required people who don't pray Krishna. Those people who are in the Vedic system, who are not in the paro dharma stage at the sadharma stage, where they do everything for material benefit. Now, this person has died. Now, if the son doesn't offer it, he has to go to Punnaganaraka. Mm. What, is the, what is the purpose of having a son who doesn't lift? He has to go to Punnaganaraka anyway? Yes, Prabhuji. 
So Prabhuji, so, then the son also, son, son also get any uh, karma fall for this one if he is not yeah. performing and yeah. all the other thing? He gets sin because he is doing vikarma. Okay, Prabhuji. Everybody has to do their duty. If you do your duty, even with a desire, that is still sakama karma. But if you don't do your duty, you get sin. That's what Arjuna was, Krishna was thinking. Arjuna. Arjuna was saying, I will not fight. Krishna said, if you don't fight, you get sin. Because your duty is to fight. Not fighting means you are getting sin. Vikarma. When you do vikarma, you get sin. That is why doing duty is very important. You cannot give up your duty. The only time you can give up your duty is for Parvodharma. Krishna said, Sarvadharma and Pratijja Mamekam Charanam Vaja. Only for Saranam to Krishna you can give up duty. Otherwise, you cannot give up your duty. Hmm. Okay, Prabhu. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Sri Prabhupada ki jai. Panchaparubhya sa Prabhupada Sindhu ke Vitapati Tanam Pavanib Jai Vaishnavi. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji.